Hello there everyone and welcome back to the channel or for the first time if you're new around here my name is James aka Widowed and this video is going to be your guide towards what regions you might want to pick depending on which primary combat style you tend to focus on. So I'm going to go over a build here for Ranger, Mage, Melee and then I've got one that's a tank as well. It's a tank Ranger because that makes the most sense and I'll explain why when we get to it. But all of these have very very strong DPSs as you can see the max hits kind of insane on some of these. The DPS itself no slouch going from 30 33 per second to 42 per second at the highest. This is the time to kill a challenge mode Jad, so one of Tazkar Rett's challenges, so the slightly stronger version of Jad. And yeah, in the in the max ranger build here, you'll see it takes just under 9 seconds, just about 11 seconds in the slowest of these builds. So, they are insane. Of course, combat masteries do a lot of the heavy lifting, and for the most part, I'm assuming that the ranger mage and melee you're gonna pick six points in their relative combat masteries to get these benefits that's how i've got them set up here for the rest of them like what you do with your other four points it's kind of up to you if you want to go like a 2-2 two -two split that works if you, three one's not bad either or even a 4-0 and just ignore one of them honestly any of them work fine let's go over the builds and we'll, we'll start with the ranger I recommend Desert, Asgarnia, and Fremenic as the regions, and not all of them are as important as the others, but in order to get this maximum build, you will need all three. That's because of the Zarite Van Braces and the Pagation Boots here are from Asgarnia. The Missouri stuff is obviously from the Desert, as would be the Twisted Bow from the Raid. And then you've got the Amulet of Monarchs and the Emperor Ring because it is the best in slot from Fremenic slash from anywhere. This is going to be a common theme. You can pretty much pick Fremenic in any build this year and you are correct. I'm not picking it personally because I picked it last year and I don't want to do a repeat. But I would say it is pretty much like just the best region. There's just no arguing with it because these jewellery are just so damn good. I haven't included it in all my builds today, but three of them have it in. Melly's the only one that's missing it, and yeah. So there's a little bit of wiggle room here. You know, you could go without the Zarite and the Pagation, or you could go even without the Missouri and try like a Tyranwin thing with a range build. This is just one setup. You could try w with uh, Void Armor. I thought that works good as well. Should we just put it in and see what the relative comparison is? If I, I'm pretty sure that's worse, right? Than what I just had. 8.7 seconds, 8.8 .8 with 45 Missouri. So it's actually slightly better to wear Void Knight, interestingly, which might mean you don't need Desert Orm as much, but you would still want a raid region to get the Twisted Bow. There's options here. This is basically, rather than a set build, I'm trying to say, hey, if you want to play Ranger, these are the things that you want to be looking towards playing around with. These are the regions you might want to pick, rather than strictly you have to go these. But if you just want a guide and you don't want to make your own mind up, you can't go wrong with what I have listed here. Anyway, that's probably enough chat on the Ranger. You can see this thing could be absolutely disgusting at its peak definitely nothing to sniff at moving on to the mage probably overlooked in this league i have my mage set up as zaya fremenic and kandarin the one that nobody wants to pick and i have two points to say here regards kandarin a part of me was wondering whether i even included it at all but i felt like every region aside from bar the wilderness because obvious reasons a lot of people who are looking at guides don't want to go to the wilderness i get that i felt like they should all have an inclusion and if anywhere is going to play Kandarin, the mage is the place to do it. And if you want to do that, I think the reason to do so is if you're newer to the game, if you're less confident in your abilities, your skills, knowledge, then Kandarin isn't a bad shout because it's going to have loads of easily doable tasks that don't require a high level of skill. 
There is no high-level content in Kandarin. There's like three bosses and they're all exceptionally easy. There's no special mechanics with them. You just hit them till they die. So like, the hardest thing to kill in the area is demonic gorillas. And demonic gorillas are a really good way to get comfortable with combat. Like, I basically trained up my combat PVM skills by fighting a shit ton of demonic gorillas. Not intentionally, I just went that dry on my Zenites, but, you know, demonic gorillas are great for training up your PVM skills. So if you don't do a lot of PVM, that's why I would recommend Kandarin. And I will just say that for all of them, but it benefits most of the mage because you do get those extra tools that you could mess around with in uh, in earlier parts of the game, like the elemental thing in the offhand from Thermi. But yeah, most of the gear, gear here isn't actually going to use Kandarin, aside from the tormented bracelet that you've got here on the wrist slot. We've got our jewellery from Fremenic again, and then most things just come from Zaya, because Ancestral is the shit. Just realised I had Infinity Boots, and they shouldn't have been there, so I got rid of that. With this build, I would recommend taking Grimoire, and if you don't take Grimoire, then you probably want to take Desert instead of Kandarin. Just because Ancients are so powerful, you're going to have access to a Kodai Wand as well, which you could use with Blood Barrage on the Autocast. So there's tons of, like, crazy stuff you can do with Ancients. You're definitely going to want either Grimoire or fill in that desert in order to take Mage to its full potential. And Zaya's key, because that's where the majority of your gear comes from. Kandarin gives a lot of gear in the early game as well that can be nice. Like the uh, the Warped Scepter, you've obviously got the Trident as well, and then in other styles, things like the Dragon Sim to just carry your early game. So don't count it out, especially if you're a less confident player. Alright, moving on to melee. There's a fair bit you can do here. You can basically take whatever is your raid region. I recommend Desert just so you can get access to those Ancients without having to take Grimoire. But if you plan to take Grimoire anyway, then you can take either of the other regions. I personally am going to be running a melee build with VZT, with Zaya instead of the Desert. And I probably will be taking Grimoire. That's just because, I, like I said, I don't want to do the same things I did last year, and I already picked the desert last year. But VDT is just as strong. It gives you the Ultra ring here, which is in fact even better than the VZT I would have. You've got the full crystal setup, which you might be thinking, why the hell are you wearing crystal with a scythe? Well, the crystal blessing from Echo Hunluff helps make that good. Like, very, very good. This benefits from this now. So we would be absolutely slapping as you can see. Uh, the echoes are calculated in here as well. 10 seconds to kill a Jad with this setup. We've got the Echo Boots, the Sunlit Braces from Echo Sol as well for the extra healing. Tons of smash damage here. You'll be attacking little loads. Got the ranged as well, you can switch to a buffer. Got all your prayers, thanks to Grimoire. I guess if you're not on Grimoire and you're getting desert, then you don't have piety. That is actually quite a difference. I would take Grimoire with this either way, even if you are desert. It doesn't matter. Pick whatever raid you want to do, and then Valmore and Tyranwin, basically, and Grimoire. Because you want piety. You definitely want piety. It's such a huge difference from having it to not. Like you go from 11.3 to 10.6. May, may not seem like a lot, but it actually is. You know, th this is the very extreme example. When you talk about the incremental over time, it's a lot different. Unfortunately, I feel like Grimoire's kind of an auto-pick for a lot of these, just because it gives you those higher level things without having to get them from Raids or Kandarin, but yeah, that's basically the melee build. There's some other options, of course. You have things from Valamor, like the Blood Moon armor that can be crazy in the early game, especially if you imagine that thing going, it's at two tick attack speed, hitting twice per hit, so that's two chances to trigger your melee echoes, would actually be bananas. You're still able to kill a Jad in 30 seconds with 80 attack and strength and just Blood Moon gear, like, it's kinda crazy. The accuracy is hella low, but... Anyway, my point is, the melee has a lot of options, both in the early, through the mid, and then into the late game with the full crystal. Maximum scythe killer setup. And then finally, we have this tank build. 
Now the tank build is just a ranger, and you can do what else with your other four points. Personally recommend taking them in magic, especially if you're taking Grimoire for the Ancients, because then you can use your Blood Barrage every now and then once the ticks have built up for your magic charges and get a huge hit for some massive burst healing if you desperately, desperately need it. Not that you're likely to in this setup. As you can see, the Justicia armor and the Guardian boots, the Gloves of the Damned and the Freminic jewelry all compound here to create almost 400 on your melee defenses and range defense. If you just pray mage, you're basically never going to get hit. And if you do, don't worry because you're firing a blowpipe every single tick. This thing fires once per tick and every five ticks, that means five attacks, which means your range thing triggers and heals for five. Basically, you're healing one hit point a tick. It's just five every five instead, as long as you keep attacking. So any damage that does somehow manage to sneak its way through your Justicia armor and your protection from magic is just going to get healed right back up again by the blowpipe. This is the build for people who just want to be absolutely invincible. With all the passives, you never miss the blowpipe, so you're guaranteed to get that healing in every five ticks as long as you keep firing. And this armor is just going to make you feel invincible. If you don't really feel that confident in PVMing and you just want to cheese your way through the content, go for this build. You do have to get yourself the Justicia armor, which comes from Tob in the first place. But while you're working your way up to that, you can still wear Barrow's armor and have the exact same effect. You'll just have lower defenses. And I'm sure you can manage to do some low level tops to get yourself one of these drops and kickstart the journey, if that is what you feel inclined to do. Everything else in the game is just going to be trivial with this setup, honestly. If I wasn't so set on Melee and Valamore this year, I'd probably be tempted by this because it's just unstoppable. I think this is probably the best. It might not be the highest damage, it might have the slowest kill time out of these. Looking at Huey now, not Jad, but it's not gonna be easy to kill, especially if you take last stand as you combat tier relic. Anyway, I think that's about all I have to say on these builds. If there's any questions you want, or you want to float one of your builds to me in the comments and ask what I think of it, feel free. I'll always respond. And make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm going to have my day one route up as soon as we know those points boundaries for the tier 2 and 3 relics so that I can accurately state it in my video. It's very nice and concise and streamlined. I'm not including any bits where you have to grind for levels or anything. It is just task, 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 task until... We are hopefully at tier 3 with our protection prayers and ready to kill Scorius. Can't wait to get that out for y'all. Until then though, look after yourselves. Be lovely to one another and I'll see you on the next one.